Colin Kaepernick, quarterback for the 49ers. Mm -hmm. What have you made from um, this Colin Kaepernick uh, not standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? I support him. I agree with him. And I do the same thing. I don't stand for pledges or national anthems. I don't. And I think that him doing so at great cost to his reputation in the short term, his popularity among some folk. Not among jersey sales. Not among jersey sales. And he's, he's, he's vowed to donate all jersey proceeds. Yeah, I mean, he already donated a million, and he's saying he's going to donate all proceeds. So he's, he's showing us this is, this is how he feels. He's making a commitment. He's making a commitment. He's making a principled stance. Everybody can be radical when there's no price to pay. Having your work celebrated is different than being a celebrity. Colin Kaepernick is in a business of celebrity, and he's decided that he was more committed to being someone whose work will be celebrated. He's committed to this beyond what happens on the field. He's coming out of a Jim Brown tradition, a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar tradition. You know, it's a different tradition. Um, and people always want to tell you what your patriotism should look like and what respect for the country looks like. James Baldwin told us that you respect America and you show your patriotism by criticizing America perpetually. You keep criticizing America, that's how you show your patriotism. It's our right, but it's also our duty. You have a right to do all kinds of wild shit, but it, it, it's a duty to do this in particular. And he's done that. And he's shown that he cares. And he's shown that he's connected to these issues. And I don't want to see him blackballed. I don't want to see him marginalized because he doesn't deserve that. What he deserves is an opportunity. But also to be able to articulate his view on why America is what it is. And, and finally, uh, and I think this frustrates me. People say, well, if you don't like it, then leave. Leave, yeah. That's the worst argument, but yeah. But they only say it to black people. <laughs> they do. No one says that to the Tea Party. Yeah. They were complaining about America. The religious right been complaining about America for 40 years. Oh my God, America's going to hell. Look at these moral values. We're losing our country. <laughs> They don't say then leave. They don't say leave. They ain't tell Pat Robertson to leave. They ain't tell Pat Robertson to leave. They, they don't tell Donald Trump to leave. The only people they tell to leave are black people and brown people. From one NFL quarterback to another, from uh, Colin Kaepernick to Cam Newton, yes. uh, we see a, a, light in, a light and day. From the sublime to the ridiculous. Yeah, uh, we see a complete night and day between the two. Uh, Cam says one fourth of an inch. That's the, the thickness of our skin, and beneath that we are all the same, and who am I to say he's right, and who am I to say he's wrong? But he is someone. He's the reigning NFL MVP. And he could have said something. He didn't say shit. He said less than a year ago, I'm a black quarterback, and that scares people. Uh, and I kind of see this as him protecting his, his money and his brand, doing the exact opposite that Collins did. He's protecting his money, he's protecting his brand. You know, one eighth of an inch, I'm just mar marveling at how so much can be applied to one eighth of an inch. What are you saying? Who says right? Who says you? You are the person to say if he's right or he's wrong. That's why you in a press conference. My thing is this, this is my man Stephen A. Smith said. If you ain't want to say nothing, don't do the press conference. But to get up there and tap dance, yes, it would have been great to not hear from him because he ain't say shit. But to sit up there and-, and Like we ain't hear from Russell, that's okay. Right. I know he's probably not going to say that. He ain't going to say that, so don't say it. But to get up there, to get up there, and not say anything, and to tap dance, and I do mean tap dance, for, for American media does little more than throw Colin Kaepernick under the bus. You ain't got to agree with his method of resistance, but acknowledge it, defend it. Yeah, and, or don't say nothing at all. I'm tired of these scared Negroes who are out here afraid to speak out against injustice, man. You go back and you, you look at the author of the national anthem. Right? This guy, he had slaves. You know, you look at Francis Scott Key, he was a slave owner. So, when I, so now, as I'm thinking about the national anthem, and I hear that line for, for the you know, land of the free, he wasn't talking about me. And he's, and he was, oh, he's rich. That's what makes it more admirable. See, Muhammad Ali was supposed to go into the draft, but he wasn't going to be given a gun. He wasn't going to be on the front lines. It was the same thing that other that Joe Lewis had done, right? It was, it was a boxing tour. He would go to different places, entertain the troops, throw his hands up. It was playful. He wasn't going to be any more in danger than, than people at home. You're right, than the chef. Even less than the chef, because they don't really protect the chef the way they're going to protect Muhammad Ali, right? It would look crazy for him. But Muhammad Ali understood 
that the symbolic endorsement of the war was worth something. So he was giving up money and fame, his belt, his career at the height. Not because he was had anything to, to lose personally, but because it was the right thing to do. Colin Kaepernick probably won't be stopped by San Francisco police. He probably won't be shot by the BART police like Oscar Grant was. He probably, you know, won't be accosted like like uh, like Trayvon Martin was. He probably won't be shot going to somebody's door like Renisha McBride. He probably won't be found hanging like Sandra Bland. He, you know, he probably won't be running away and get shot like like uh, Walter Scott. None of that stuff will probably happen to him. But he understood that even though his condition was okay, that he was making a sacrifice for people who could never be where he is. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, no man ever rises above, no man can ever rise above the condition of his people. To understand that, that no man can ever rise above the condition of his people is to understand what Colin Kaepernick and Muhammad Ali and all these other people were doing. They're saying that it doesn't matter how privileged I am. I'm speaking out for the people who cannot. That to me is more admirable than anything else. Peace, this is Mark Lamont Hill and you are watching Revolt.